Guys, 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 guess what? Guess what? I loaded up Company Heroes 2 to do a shoutcast, and I looked in the, the spectate menu, because why not? Uh, and Imperial Dane's playing a fucking game against Chun. I don't know who Chun is, but I was like, who? It's, he's famous. He's on YouTube, and he posts videos every day. Uh, and he knows about history, so I'm gonna I'm gonna watch the guy play the game. He's also pretty good, I think. Back when I was playing Company Heroes 2, a lot more. Um, Imperial Dan was also playing Company Heroes 2. He's continued to play, so presumably he's gotten better, and he was better than me back then. That wasn't bad. Uh, he's not like a pro or anything, but he's pretty good. He's pretty good at the game, so I assume Chun is pretty good at the game, because that's how matchmaking is supposed to work. In this video game, if you haven't noticed already because you are blind and you're listening to this like a uh, radio cast, we have Imperial Dane playing as the Germans. Who oh, big fucking surprise! The Nazi plays as the Germans. That's not fair to him. He's not a Nazi. He's a neo-Nazi. And Chun is playing as the Americans going for the uh, classic double rifleman start. This is classic because the icon for the rifleman is two rifles crossed. So if you purchase two riflemen, one after the other, it's like um, there's synergy. They sort of make out after the game is over if you keep both the squads alive. Same thing with the uh, grenadiers because their icon is a little V with two lines. I don't know what that means. I, it always looks to me like sort of two arms um, like clasped down in a V shape or it'll sort of like an upside down high five, like a down low too slow sort of thing. Does it look like that to you? I can't zoom in because if you zoom in it just makes the icon either the same size or smaller. It looks like it gets smaller but that might be an optical illusion because like you know how the moon looks bigger when it's closer to the horizon but it's actually not bigger? It's the same size it just looks bigger because it's around stuff so maybe when this when this icon is around smaller things like this truck it looks big and then when it's around bigger things like the truck it looks small. Uh, so we have a fight we have a fight. This map is snowy. Imperial Dane has his Imperial machine gun in the Imperial house, firing at the Imperial other house. And uh, we have a couple of Grenadiers out uh, for Imperial Dane. I got a Gren MG. Gren uh, thing. A quick retreat by those pioneers off on the right. That's kind of a weird retreat given that the um, Grenadiers were coming up to fight the riflemen. But I can like, kind of understand because the pioneers had already lost one person and you don't want to start bleeding. Uh, a lot of manpower out of those pioneers early in the game like this and uh, I guess uh, Imperial Dane was still able to capture the um, capture the point, the fuel point, that's the important thing, that's what he was going for so uh, he, he got what he wanted out of that engagement and it looks like he's going really heavy on the right that's where his machine gun is, getting kind of unlucky with these Grenadiers um, to, be, to be fair they're in yellow cover versus the green cover of these riflemen. This is at about the range where I think uh, riflemen tend to be Grenadiers a little bit, or maybe it's about even. I can't sort of remember any of that shit. This machine gun hasn't moved the entire time. A nice placement that is a very good place for a machine gun, because if you turn on the fog of war, we can't see goddamn thing, because it's the wrong player. But then we click on Imperial Dane, and uh, we still can't see anything, because he's got units in the middle, and those are fucking up the fog of war. But eventually I'll show you how much you can see with that machine gun in that building. Building's one of the most important tools for uh, securing control of the fog of war. Oh, goddamn, he took it out of the building. Because um, you just get so much sight if you put a unit in a building. Uh, you can see for miles and miles. Like it's like that Who song. I can see for miles and miles. Um, I know you've deceived me, but here's a surprise. I know that you have because there's magic in my eyes. I can see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Great song. Classic song. Oh, I don't. Uh, have music playing, if you can tell. My Company Heroes 2 shotcasts now don't have any game music. I turn the game music down to zero. I usually turn the game music down to zero when I'm playing, because I listen to my own music, but then I turned it up for um, for uh, shoutcasts, and I realized I'll just leave it off and people can play their own music to my shoutcasts. That's perfect. Um, the best would be if I got to inflict my own music choices on you, because that's always fun, but uh, YouTube would nail me for copyright, because I'd be playing The Who. I can see for miles and miles, and... Um, I don't think YouTube would want that, especially because I'm selling ads on my videos. YouTube's selling ads on my videos. I'm doing fuck all, but I get like 30 cents for every video that I post, so I'm basically rich is what I'm saying. Uh, we do have Armor Company chosen. I like, think we just wiped out a squad. That's uh, that's really unfortunate for the United States player. Nice job, Imperial Dane. Really aggressive use of this machine gun. Um, repositioning it when it needs repositioning and not repositioning it when it doesn't need repositioning. These pioneers are fucked. Um, that was kind of a couple unfortunate crits right at the end right there, but um, we have a nice, nice, yeah, notice how Dane is always moving this thing around, and that's a really bold position right here. He's keeping the, yeah, excellent stun grenade, 
coming in here that was just chosen, this doctrine just chosen, elite troops by Imperial Dane, and this means he can get a lightning warp, let's creep sort of shit going in on these assault engineers, and he might even take out a squad, I don't think so, it's got enough health that it's going to be really tough to kill it on the retreat, and we've also got these squads here, but that was a nice try from Dane, um, I really like seeing that, again, he's always repositioning this machine gun when it needs to be repositioned, we have a mortar set up soon, and I'm sure we'll see, yeah, already we see Dane reacting to this mortar uh, that he saw with his grenadiers and moving it, um, when it needs to. This mortar is going to provide some fire support. Dan is going to try and hold this position for as long as possible because he wants to keep this uh, mortar here as long as possible. Those poor rear echelon troops couldn't flank around the side, so um, it's just going to turn into a mortar fight now and it's a desperate hold for Dane, and it looks like the Germans are going to be able to pull this off. I don't know, this is going to be tough if this American squad gets out of the house, which it does. Very good job for the Americans for probably hop in this house. Very good. And that's going to push the German player completely off. Dane having to run. He might even be able to chase down this MG again. I think it's got too much health to kill on the retreat, especially because this is not a red cover road. So, um... It's probably going to be fine, but um, nice aggressive play by the Americans. I really like to play it by both players. I think Dane um, maybe making a mistake focusing so hard on the right-hand side of the uh, map. The American player very happy to keep the fight uh, over here on this side of the map because he's capped the entire left-hand side of the map and also a bit of the red. So if you look at the income difference, 26 to 20 fuel, 42 to 32. Um, munitions, and most importantly, well, I was going to say most importantly, the American has the uh, VP lead, but Dane actually managed to decap that at some point. So Dane down to 463, the American's still at 500, and uh, now things are maybe going to look up for Dane, because we've entered the part of the um, the part of the match where the American is teching up. We have the uh, captain out from the Americans. Fucking nobody goes lieutenant anymore. Um, and so that means the American player presumably saving up for the Stuart, uh, but that actually doesn't have the manpower for it, so you gotta uh, commend Dane for all the... Ooh, that was a nice grenade dodge right there. Commend Dane for getting enough manpower bleed in here that uh, he's delaying the Stuart a bit. Now the Stuart can come out. I don't know if the Americans can immediately do that, because he's still got re ooh, reinforced, and that was an excellent mortar hit by Dane. Um, we lost a gun crew, I guess. That was the mortar. Um, saying that very early before the retreat, and so now things are looking a little grim for the Americans. He's got to save up enough manpower to get that steward out, but he's also got to reinforce all these people who are dying. If he can just keep his keep in the game until that uh, steward comes out, then that'll swing things right back to the Americans. These guys are still fucking stunned from the grenade, I guess. Um, and it was really good that the Americans managed to keep all these squads alive, except for the gun crew, I guess, and that one rifleman squad that died a while ago. Um, but there's only so much stuff the American player can do on this depleted manpower sort of thing. The story is now coming out, but the American paying for it by not having enough manpower to reinforce all these squads. If this squad dies, that'll really be bad. I think there's a chance it'll go down. This is, again, not a red cover road. Oh, that was a nice retreat. So, um, looks like they'll get away. Man, a lot of, uh... I was about to say a lot of hair's breadth retreats, but actually not. Most of the retreats have been fairly safe. That was the one that was a hair's breadth. Nice uh, little infiltration grenade thing. That's what it's called, right? No, it's a Model 24 stun grenade, but from the Elite Troops Doctrine. There's no fucking infiltration. The Stormtroopers are the Elite Infiltration Troops. Whatever. Everything's got different names. Now the Stuart's out, so now the United States player can really try and come back in the game. Uh, Dane has correctly predicted this. Uh, you don't exactly have to be a tactical genius to predict that your opponent's going to go faster, because every fucking American in this fucking game seems to be doing it. Um, and also, he saw the captain, so that's doubly obvious. But uh, anyways, he predicts it and gets the pack 40 out, so... We'll have to see how this play goes. Dane has clawed his way back into the match by just having these pioneers cap the entire left hand side of the map, so things are looking real nice for him. But again, it's just gonna come down come just going to come down to the Stuart versus the Pack 40. Dum da dum dum dum. My throat is hurting a little bit. I haven't talked this much since I was uh since I was last shoutcasting, really. I'm a very quiet person. In real life, I rarely talk, so shoutcasting is more talking than I do ever. It's just constant talking. God damn, Pioneer's wiped out by the uh, Stewart, so that's going to put an end to that fucking capping. Um, how's this engagement going? Dane's just trying to keep the mortar in the fight long enough to get some... Oh, this is going to hurt. Did that... That must have... Yeah, I told you it was going to hurt. Two fucking people dead, the captain almost dead. Luckily, there's nobody around to kill it. Um... Badass assault engineers in this building with the flamethrower. I'm a real fan of the assault engineers. I think they're not very good, but other people think they're not very good, and because of that, they don't like them. I think they're not very good, but I still think they're cool. Um, they're they're bros. They're my bros. 
Um, I don't often get them, but they're still my bros. I just like the flamethrower. I like how they, I like how they're, they're engineers. I don't know. I don't know what I like. I think I like their unit icon is what I like. It's a, it's like a rook from, from chess. I don't know why I like that, but I like it. Uh, interesting choice. We have a half track out. Presumably this is so Dane can reinforce in the field, um, especially to keep the um, mortar and eventually the Pac-40 alive. Pac-40 did get decrewed by this uh, wonderful aggression from the Americans and maybe the American mortar too, uh, so Dane has to recrew it at this point. Yeah, um, I suspect the MG mortar pack, even Grenadiers getting uh, reinforces what's about that. So this is a huge overextension by the Sherman. I don't know what the plan was, or by the Stewart. Have I been calling a Sherman the entire time? I hope not. It's a Stewart. I know it's a Stewart. I know at least that shit. Um, huge overextension. Presumably thinking the pack party was all the way over here and not a threat, but honestly, over here is a tiny bit from over here, and over here means it can shoot over here, and that's where the Stewart fucking was. So I don't know what the plan was. Uh, with this thing, and if it gets nailed in the back by this Pack 40, that's gonna be rest in peace, rest in pepperonis. But it hit the uh, it hit the ground, so lucky break there from the United States player, just having to heal up, reinforce down to very low manpower. Notice still, um, both players floating a bit of fuel. Americans at 93. American probably um, thinking save up for another Stewart or react to whatever the opponent is. Obviously, he's got enough fuel for the Stewart. What I mean is he's got to save the manpower because. Both players bleeding manpower, American especially, and Dane, I don't know. Dane also doesn't have the manpower to tech up if Dane wants to tech up, but it looks like we just have, oh no, we have Pioneers built. So we just got tier 1 and tier 2, or tier 2 and tier, tier 0 and tier 1, because you fucking, I'm not going to go into this. One of my old shotguns like a year ago or whatever, I think I go into this, and maybe I didn't, it was on, it was on some shotguns I did with Rogers, I think, back in the day. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the Aster tiers and the weird names that they have. I just don't know who's going to win this game at this point. And we're live spectating it, so there's no way you know either, unless somehow somebody posts this replay or something. Um, I don't know, but this is exciting. Oh man, nice stun grenades go in, but these guys can just retreat to the uh, ambulance, which I do pretty soon if I were them. They're not going to do anything more in this building because they don't have the range with their main guns, and they don't have the range with their flamethrowers, so at this point, I guess at this point they're spotting for the mortars. He doesn't get it out in time to save it from any losses. He does lose one person, but that's not so bad. And I guess they're spotting for the American mortar, which seemed like it just hit something. Oh, it got some kills on the MG, I believe. Um, but that's... Oh! Wait, no. It moved. It retreated. Excellent! Excellent move! It didn't even retreat. It just moved. Calm and composed, American mortar moves out of the barrage range of the German mortar and does not take any damage from that shell that nailed exactly where it was. And um, again, we have an overbold Stuart. I don't know why the American player thinks this is going to happen. Stop trying to make Stuarts happen. You're just going to get shot by the Pack 40. This map is not conducive to this sort of base rush. If the Pack 40 were up over here, maybe, or especially over here, if somehow the American player had baited the Pack 40 over there, then I could totally sanction this base rush, but it's just not fucking happening. Because uh, the Pack 40 is over here, and it's just so easy for it to reposition and nail a store, especially when there's just Panzerfaust for days ready to take out its engine. So I can't understand what the American player was going for with that. A second time is just not Gonna, it's not gonna get you what you want. You gotta, you gotta use your steward in a more sensible way. Your entire strategy, the linchpin, is the steward. And um, now things look dire, and we do have this field reinforcement going on. Excellent half track playing its role, playing its important role. You don't want a um, bunker to play uh, that sort of role because number one, I can't even remember if they can do that. I think they can, but um, no, maybe they can't. But even if they can, it's going to get mortared into hell, so... Uh, yeah, so uh, these bazookas maybe going to take out the half-track. It's already at such low health. Pop some smoke to get out of there. And uh, this is going to be unfortunate for the German player who's all clustered in this area. And uh, it's going to be Mortar City, I suspect, if the German does not pack it up and go. And the German packs it up and goes with the pack. Pack up the pack! Ahoy, ahoy, ahoy! Oh, look! Dollar sign 11116689, no key. That's my favorite notification. That means something about these motherfuckers. Maybe they got that one. Maybe it means, um... Maybe it means they found true love. So, suddenly things not looking so great for Dane. Uh... Just losing squads. Uh, lost a squad over here long ago. Is a pioneer squad. I think lost a um, 
Grenadier squad. I can't remember if I remarked on that. Looks like I lost another um, Grenadier squad over here. And so down to one. Count them. One Grenadier squad. One Grenadier squad. And one Pioneer squad. So that's the only thing Dane has that can fight, really. There's the machine gun which can fight and the mortar which can fight. But those are... Um, look, we've teched up to tier... Battle Phase 2. I'll call it Battle Phase 2. There's no argument about that. We got the support armor corn and Osfin coming out. Um, so that's going to be Dane's entire uh, Dane's entire force. The United States player may be going to regret having just bought a rifleman squad once this Osfin comes out, but the United States player does have plenty of stuff in the bank. I think this is ready uh, for Dane's next taking choice. So I like the American player's choice here. I think um, this is a really good, by the way, uh, putting these captains in here to get some bazooka shots in. Doesn't manage to take out the half-track, which is really unfortunate for the Americans. That could have been a really, really damaging assault uh, for the... Um, a really damaging assault launched by the Americans, damaging to the Germans, but didn't manage to quite inflict enough damage. I don't know what the fuck those re echelon guys are doing. They got a bit of damage in on the mortar, which is impressive. Um, and the American player still keeping up the assault. I like this. Where's the American player's mortar, though? Forgotten about capping the VP. Um, and now the Austrian is out, so this could be ugly. Um, yeah, so whether this was on purpose or not, I suspect it was on purpose. The American player was delaying the teching until he saw the German player's choice. The Oswin, um, fairly predictable if you know your opponent's going battle phase two, but there's that's tough to know because um, he didn't see it when he drove the steward in. So um, now that he's seen it, um, whether or not that was on purpose, I suspect it was. Um, oh, gun crew wiped out. We've got fucking so much stuff going on. We've got uh, stormtroopers called in over here to recruit uh, the American mortar that was wiped out by... The, presumably the stormtroopers. Um, and anyway, so the tagging. We've got the M10 Wolverine called in with the off-map. And notice we can call in another Wolverine, which is 150 manpower in a minute, a cooldown. So uh, that will be a really excellent response to this Austin. The Austin actually can hurt the tank destroyer, but the, you don't want to fight it with the Austin. Um, the tank destroyer is going to eat its lunch. Um, and this is anybody's game still at this point. United States player um, looking a bit better in terms of infantry, although losing that mortar is actually a big deal. Just because so much of the German player's uh, army hinges around these support weapons, the the pack, the MG, and the mortar, and now that the United States player doesn't have a mortar, and now the German has two mortars, things could look ugly in the future. But for now, the United States player is sitting pretty, owns most of the map, and knows they own most of the map. The Ostman has been effectively neutered by this M10, which I'm not sure the German has seen, but I think he probably saw it, because he hasn't sent his Ostman in to try and like destroy everything the way the Stuart was sent in. And notice, though, aside from that M10... And aside from the AT grenades, the only AT the United States player has is Captain, double vet Captain, by the way, but still, um, if the M10 is not by the Ostwin, which is what we see here, the Ostwin over here on the right, M10 all the way on the left, uh, the Ostwin will just have free reign, that's three rifleman dead for effectively nothing and effectively zero time at all, and that's really damaging, the M10 having to reposition itself, but already the Ostwin is shifting. Um, is the M10 going to shift in response? Yes, it will. Drive straight towards the Ostman. Rear echelon gang themselves hurt, but it's for a good cause. They're uh, tanking the mortar fire so that the Americans can get close. Uh, we have some nice Flammenwerfer pioneers here in this building. Oh no, the captain's almost destroyed by the Ostman. They drop their bazooka, pick up the bazooka. No, he's not picking up the bazooka. That's definitely going to go to the Germans if they go know what's good for them. We have this Pack 40. Where the fuck is the Pack 40? The Ostman is out of control. I don't know what the hell is going on. What is the Pack 40 doing? There's the Pack 40. It's all the way around the house. What is it doing up there? I don't know why you'd move the Pack 40 so far except to try and catch the M10, but that's a really excellent, stunning shot from Lord knows what stunned that thing. Was it the mortar? I don't think it was the mortar. Somehow the crew was stunned. And it looks like the... Oh no, is the M10 going to stick around to kill the path track? It's not worth it. My friend, it's not worth it to lose your M10. Actually, it turns out to be worth it. I don't know what I'm talking about, because uh, he escaped scot-free. Actually, took a hit from the pack fort, but that's actually probably good. Uh, you get a bit more veterancy on it when you take some damage, and then it can repair itself. The pack fort, you get veterancy too, but it's easier to kill the pack fort, you wipe it out uh, with some infantry. These stormtroopers are a really good investment. They wiped out the mortar, and now they're just decapping some stuff, so I'm sure Imperial Dane is very happy with this, and still anybody's game. United States player looking fairly good. Uh, got, so, got a lot of infantry squads alive, but he, losing that mortar was a big... Uh, blow, and the Austria player can just replenish infantry with stormtroopers, I suppose. They're expensive, but he's got the manpower, and um, he has teched up 
to uh, Battle Phase 2, which means eventually we could see a Panzer IV coming out. And the Panzer IV, not a great counter to the uh, to the M10, which is being repaired. It's not dead, it's just being repaired. Um, but um, it'll at least stand up to the M10 better than the uh, Ostfind will. Ooh, let's watch. What the fuck? Hmm. That can't be right. Did Imperial Dane quit? He's the only one I could have imagined quitting, but it wouldn't seem like he would quit. Why is this happening, Relic? Relic. Well, I don't know if I'll post this. Maybe I'll post it because he's famous on YouTube. And this was a really good match up until now. I don't know even who's going to win. Maybe I'll quit out and see if the game is still in the observe thing. Maybe I just lost connection. Uh... And I'm down to 20 frames per second. That's exciting. Thanks, Company Heroes 2. I love you. Not nah, get fucked.